do you know that there is another worldly place right here on our own planet? Only here the sun has never shone. Wild variations in temperature exist, with islands around volcanic vents punctuating seas of frigid cold with scorching hot water. That is, hot springs at one step and water below the freezing point at another. Additionally, the pressure would be sufficient to crush you like a soda can beneath a bus. We're not referring to some terrifying planet hurtling across the cosmos. This place is right here on Earth. This is an underwater realm full of mystery and vast study opportunities below about 11,000 meters of sea level. Recently, scientists have made a startling discovery that alters everything at this location. Where is this terrifying place and what have scientists found there? Let's find out. This is the story of the Mariana Trench. Between Japan and the island of New Guinea is the Mariana Trench, an oceanic trench. It is both the lowest location on the planet and the deepest such trench in the world. It is so deep that even if Mount Everest were to be located at its lowest known location, its peak would still be covered by two kilometers of water. The pressure is so tremendous here because of how deeply this area is submerged. Only two of the 13 persons who have made the trip to the Challenger Deep, the trench's deepest known point, have done so more than once. Only submersibles with hardened steel or titanium holes of 64 millimeters, that's two and a half inches in thickness, may make the approximate four-hour descent. The bottom of the trench has never been reached by a human being before. In other words, more individuals have walked on the moon's surface than in the trench. How did the Mariana Trench form? The crust of the Earth is a solid rock shell that surrounds the planet. Our planet's dry land is formed by some of the crust thicker or continental crust regions. Since water naturally prefers to flow downward and toward lower altitudes, the oceans are found in the regions of our world with the thinnest oceanic crust. The Earth is a planet that supports life while being covered in a layer of remarkably solid rock. Earth's skin is constantly forming, aging, and finally being recycled as part of a continuous cycle, exactly as how human skin ages and gets replaced. In subduction zones where tectonic plates converge and push beneath one another, the crust is absorbed back into the molten mantle of the Earth, driving this process, whereas new crust is formed in rift areas where tectonic plates move apart from one another. The Mariana Trench is among the deadliest places on Earth because of its depth. Water is colder than zero degrees Celsius and it is always in the dark. The intense water pressure renders the existence of life as we know it all but impossible. Eight tons per square inch rises as depth is increased. Under this pressure, any air-filled crevice in the human body would instantly collapse. The bones would be crushed and the lungs would collapse from lack of air. The Mariana Trench is the part of the crust that is the deepest. One such subduction zone where the Earth's crust pushes far into the planet's interior forms the Mariana Trench. It descends roughly 11,034 meters, that's 36,201 feet, below the ocean's surface. A microplate is another name for the Mariana tectonic plate. The tiny Mariana tectonic plate and the Pacific plate are separated from one another on the eastern side by the Mariana Trench. The Mariana microplate is pushed toward and underground by the Pacific plate, creating the Mariana Trench. The Mariana Islands, which gave the region its name, were formed on the surface by volcanic activity brought on by the melting of material from the Pacific plate. The exact age of this subduction process is unknown. What is known is that the region has had volcanic activity for at least 50 million years, which indicates that the trench is at least as old, if not older, given the subduction had to begin before any volcanic activity that it caused on the surface. On January 23, 1960, a manned mission was launched to the unexplored world at the bottom of the trench for the first time. The underwater environment was agitated by the Trieste submersible, which was operated by Lieutenant John Walsh of the US Navy and oceanographer Jacques Picard. Both of them saw a way of living that was then unknown to humanity. 
Is there any life in such extreme conditions as those? That was the biggest question they had to address. When the submersible finally reached the bottom, 4 hours and 47 minutes later, Picard noticed something outside. Declaring that he had seen a fish, he cried out to Walsh. After Walsh confirmed that it was a flatfish, the silt below quickly obstructed their vision, preventing them from recording what they had just seen with a camera. Marine biologists disputed the assertion for many years, arguing that a fish cannot survive under such intense pressure. However, the two remained steadfast in their story. In missions that followed, the question of whether life existed in the darkness beneath 11,000 meters was resolved. The Mariana Trench's bottom is extremely hostile to life due to the complete lack of sunshine, but the extreme pressure there makes it deadly. Any object or creature on the bottom of this trench will be flattened by a column of water due to the extreme depth it reaches, which results in constant pressure of up to 8 tons per square inch, that's 1.24 tons per square centimetre. Any empty area within your body would almost immediately collapse inward under this pressure. If subjected to such forces, our bones wouldn't stand a chance and would break apart immediately. Life nevertheless finds a way. There are over 200 species known to exist in the waters of the Mariana Trench as of today, despite the fact that we have very little information on life there. The majority of them are microscopic organisms like bacteria or teeny tiny creatures like crabs and amphipods. Larger occupants include fish, octopi and sea cucumbers. More than 200 known microorganisms and small species, including crabs and amphipods, have been reported to live there despite the trench's lack of light, acidic environments and cold temperatures. There have been discoveries of bacteria, crustaceans, sea cucumbers, octopi and fish in the Mariana Trench. The Mariana snailfish, which is the deepest living fish, was found in 2014, not far from Guam, at a depth of 8,000 meters. Dr. Ram, a former employee of the US space agency NASA, is currently an enzymologist at the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology in Saudi Arabia. He has conducted extensive research on extremophile microorganisms similar to those that have been discovered in the Mariana Trench. Back at the Picard Welsh meeting, Marine biologists pose the same question. How is it possible for fish to survive in such a high-pressure environment and at sub-freezing temperatures without sunlight? The pressure is assumed to be too great for calcium to exist. That would cause vertebrate bones to disintegrate, but the Mariana fish have evolved in an amazing way. Fish that reside near the ocean's surface could have an air-filled swim bladder, this aids in their buoyancy or submersion in the water. These air sacs were abandoned by the deep sea fish so that they wouldn't be crushed. There are other further adaptations found in aquatic life. Skulls with spaces, bodies built primarily of cartilage rather than bones, and even genetic evolution. Proteins must be able to alter form steadily in order for movement and reactions to occur under high pressures. The Mariana snailfish, the gene that produces the necessary compound trimethylamine oxide TMAO, contains not one but five copies. They even have membranes made of lipids, such as vegetable oil, to keep them from freezing solid. The deep marine fauna has also discovered sources of energy and illumination other than sunlight. Some have improved their vision dramatically, while others have given up on the need for vision in favor of touch and vibration. To entice mates or terrify prey, bioluminescent organisms generate light on their own. They rely on the bacterial process of chemosynthesis, which converts inorganic materials into organic materials to make up for the lack of photosynthesis. Fish carcasses and even wood that has sunk to the ground serve as dependable food sources. Researchers have emphasized the importance of doing studies in every remote corner of the globe. Uncovering the secrets of the Black Ocean may lead to the discovery of more effective food, medication and energy sources, as well as the early detection of potentially fatal earthquakes and tsunamis. The biggest riddle that could be cleared out by digging deep is how the Earth's ecology is changing. 
extreme environments where life can exist, such as high pressures, icy temperatures, and total darkness, can teach humans about the evolutionary process that produced life as we know it. Microbes that potentially serve as sources for antibiotic or anti-cancer medications have been discovered by researchers. The most tragic thing that mankind has ever done to the globe is to poison the pure environment with its polluted footprints. A study found that the Mariana Trench had higher pollution levels than the surrounding highly industrialized areas. It implies that the bioaccumulation has led to a rise in anthropogenic contamination, which has been seen in the planet's deepest trench. At the bottom of the trench, plastic cans, disposable dishes and bags have been discovered. The findings of a study that claimed to have discovered microplastics in the amphipods were more concerning. From plastic bottles to the synthetic clothing we wear, microplastic is a part of our system. You would be mistaken if you believed that the trench could evade the worldwide plastic pollution crisis. According to a recent study, a plastic bag similar to those given away at grocery shops was discovered inside the Mariana Trench at a depth of 10,975 meters, that's 36,000 feet, making it the deepest piece of plastic rubbish ever discovered. The Deep Sea Debris Database, a recently made public collection of images and videos from 5,010 dives over the past 30 years, was used by scientists to search for it. Plastic was the most common type of waste that could be classified, and plastic bags in particular were the main source of plastic rubbish. Other debris included items made of rubber, metal, wood and cloth, some of which have not yet been categorized. A staggering 89% of the plastic was the kind that is only used once and then discarded, such as a plastic water bottle or disposable utensil. The most recent research also discovered that 17% of the photos of plastic that were stored in the database revealed some sort of interaction between marine life and the plastic, such as when creatures become tangled in the trash. Where did the plastic come from? The latest study is only one of many that demonstrate how pervasive plastic pollution has grown to be on a global scale. Single-use plastics are widely used, yet once in the wild, they could take hundreds of years or longer to decompose. Other research found that in some areas, the Mariana Trench had higher pollution levels overall than some of China's most contaminated rivers. The authors of the study proposed that the breakdown of plastic in the water column may have contributed to the chemical contaminants in the trench. Recently, the environmental movement has placed more emphasis on plastic. This past Earth Day, for instance, it was a major topic. A 2017 study found that the majority of plastic entering the ocean comes from 10 rivers that flow through densely populated areas. Plastic can enter the ocean directly in other ways as well, such as trash dumped from ships or trash blown from beaches. A study recently indicated that abandoned fishing gear was a significant contributor to the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is a floating collection of trash the size of Texas that is currently floating between Hawaii and California. Although there is undoubtedly considerably more plastic in the ocean than there is in a single plastic bag, the object has evolved from a wind-tossed metaphor for apathy to a symbol of profound influence humans can have on the environment. It has been demonstrated that microplastics hurt sea life, which is already suffering from overfishing and climate change. The fact that we discovered such incredibly high concentrations of these pollutants really emphasizes the catastrophic long-term effects that human activity is having on the environment. According to a more recent study from the University of Michigan, the trench receives a harmful mercury poisoning from fish carcasses sinking from near-surface waters. This neurotoxin's discovery suggests a risky trend. The toxin would have to travel over 11,000 meters of water. According to the research, poisons are released into the atmosphere by coal-fired power stations, cement plants, incinerators, mines, and other operations. In the end, this mercury makes its way to the ocean by runoff from rivers and estuaries, dust and rain. What comes next is far riskier. 
The mercury is changed by microbes into the very poisonous form of methylmercury, which accumulates in fish. The brain, immunological and digestive systems of humans and other animals who consume contaminated seafood can be harmed by this toxin. The Mariana Trench is so harsh and unlike the environments we are accustomed to that it might as well be a foreign planet. Its existence proves that life persists despite the fact that the Earth can be a very difficult environment in which to live. The Ring of Fire 2 expedition, which was the final manned mission to the trench, took place in February 2021. Victor Vescovo and Richard Garriott, an American businessman, video game creator and private astronaut, also made the descent following an unmanned plunge. Thus, Garriott became the 17th and most recent person to dive into the Mariana Trench. The Mariana Trench should act as a sobering reminder of our technological limitations as well as how far and how deep our tenacity and curiosity may carry us as humanity verges farther into space. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.